An industry professional sent me a very nice gift. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. It's mail day and a little bit of unboxing. But I want to start with this awesome gift from Eric Ernest. So if you don't know who he is, he runs Abalone Vintage. And he is the guy you go to when you need a burst verified versus like a really good replica. People pay him to go all over the world just to inspect their vintage guitars. And he's got a pretty cool collection himself. He's the guy that we talk about with those crazy double necks. But previously on the show, we talked about Maudie Moore's estate and how so many really cool things were auctioned off in a very poor manner. Some of it went cheap, some of it went for fair prices, but that was just a treasure trove of goods. And in one of the comments, somebody said, I heard Eric Ernest bought all this stuff. And sure enough, a couple of days later, Eric texts me and it doesn't seem like he bought everything, but he was the first one at those doors as soon as they opened. He camped out overnight in their driveway so he could be the first one to see everything. But he saw how excited I was for my video and he said, I'm going to send you a little care package of some things from the Maudy Moore estate. So... I don't think it's my V Les Paul template, but it's probably gonna be some cool stuff. He was also telling me that a lot of those templates, there's probably hundreds of them out there because they needed one of those for like every step of the process from the inlays to the routing. So maybe some of those pieces weren't quite as special. He was also saying a lot of those bulk headstock veneers had blemishes on them, like they weren't first quality. That's why they were stored rather than sold and or brought on to Gibson. But at the end of the day, I think it's just cool to get anything from that estate because it's verified. You know what that was initially used for. It's not just some guy who made a fake. Let's go ahead and see what we've got here. The first item looks like an actual guitar. What's going on here? <laughs> oh man, that's pretty cool. So it almost looks like somebody used this as a coaster at one point in time for like a coffee table and like stuff has dripped on it. But that looks like maple. It's in a generic acoustic guitar shape. I wonder if Maudie like made and sold these as coasters or if she was just practicing her saw skills. That's pretty cool. Next up here, we've got something else. Yeah, that's exactly what that looks like. Wouldn't a mug fit right in there? But what's cool about this one is it's multi-layered. Nice. Oh, cool. And she was practicing her inlay work of stars. Now her headstock's not exactly Gibson, probably because she didn't want to get sued. But this reminds me of the Explorer E2s, or the Flying V2s. Or for that matter, the Gibson M3 Deluxe. So it looks like two pieces maple with three pieces mahogany. Our next gift. Oh, so it's the Gibson Mandolin. But this one actually has a finish over top of it. And it actually looks surprisingly good. So this one looks more so like she made these for decoration. Like you could put these up in your house because that would hang on a nail in your wall. That is a nice little decoration, especially knowing it came from Audi. So maybe that's what these were meant to be, but it was before they were finished. This one's taped up. Maybe it's something different. Ah, oh, yeah. It's one of those super 400 tail pieces. That's a fantastic gift. Thank you, Eric. I've never actually seen one of these up close in person. I didn't realize there was etching down here by your strap button as well as on the top. But now I know it's the pantograph machine that made all those little carvings. I just always figured Gibson had these outsourced and technically they did. It was just Tamati, but that was all kind of hand done, at least hand guided and machine etched. But okay, I see what he's talking about now. Maybe that's why a lot of these stuck around because they're not the prettiest on the back. Doesn't mean you can't use it though. The top's beautiful. Oh, wow, do you hear how that rings? That's a finely tuned piece of brass. Next in the box. Oh, Eric, you shouldn't have. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously, from the bottom of my heart, out of everything I saw in that whole estate collection, this is what I wanted to display in my future museum the most. The actual award. I'm assuming maybe she had to make it herself. I've had employers do that to me in the past. I have to make my own award. But this looks like something that Gibson probably would have gave to her for her years of service from 64 through 1980. Like officially as an employee of Gibson before she just switched out to contract work would be how I understand it. Because she worked with Gibson way past that date. But yeah, I know she was working with other companies before this end date too. But you've got a Gibson Birdland cutout over here. The tuner tips are too hard to keep on, <laughs> but it is slightly raised, so it's like a sticker, but that is awesome. It's not my award, but it has her name engraved on it. We won't forget her, and that's what historic preservation is all about, but that looks like a nice piece of maple. 
and it actually has the real Gibson headstock design to it. I certainly was not expecting that to be in the box, let's just say that. But we're not even done yet, my friends. Looks like we might have another tailpiece in here. This was the other one, a Birdland's tailpiece, you know, just like what we saw on that award over there. Maybe that was her favorite model? But it's got similar blemishes on the back. But other than that, I don't see why you couldn't use it. I wonder if she did welding at all, and that's why she had these things. Curious what note this one's tuned to. This one definitely has more of a bell-like ring to it. I like that, that's funny. Our next item's looking like it's gonna be something pretty crazy, too. Oh my. Maudie was locked and loaded. I thought that was gonna be her, like, Gibson tag or something. But look at this! Look at it! 2550 headstock blanks! A Les Paul custom? Another custom? Another 2550? That's something happened to our 25? Alright, I understand now. Ah, oh, Les Paul artist. What's the last one? Another artist. Oh, I've I've wanted these for display for such a long time. But now I can definitely see what he was talking about. That most of these were second quality. Like there's something weird with our lightning bolt thing right there. Many of them have cracked pearl inlays in a few locations. But honestly, I think you could still install these on a guitar and not be that bothered by it. But it looks like Maudie actually had to hand engrave the Les Paul in the center. Because if you look at the regular headstock, it actually has it engraved in that centerpiece. This one got started and then she got called away. But if you don't understand what a headstock overlay is, this is what goes on top of the headstock of a guitar to make it look fancy. Like this has the binding and everything already on it. The 50s vintage had like Hollywood veneers before they switched to these materials. And my friends, I don't even think our fun's over yet. Because this one's tape too. That means there's crazy stuff in it. And it's heavy. This appears to be Maudie's string cutter with built-in hammer. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to have a piece of her toolage. Actually, you know what this probably is? It might be like a fret end cutter. Yes, Eric confirmed for me that these are fret end cutters and then the hammer bit was put on there to put the frets into place. So she must have dabbled in fret work as well. But that goes great next to her little display. And lastly, we've just got a whole bunch of paperwork. This looks like it's talking about heritage stuff with Liberty Bell. Here's a cool cutout of a Gibson headstock for a mandolin. Maudie's handwritten old address of Gibson, so she doesn't forget. Looks like different inlay patterns, old work orders from Heritage, a sheet from Maudie basically saying what she can do for Heritage as far as a special truss rod cover with her sketches. Looks like a Heritage sketch, some more Heritage, as well as a pamphlet from 2006 that looks like it's from 1986. <laughs> Actual photograph over here. Pay stubs from Gibson in the early 90s. That's cool. This one's funny. It talks about, hey, there's some salmon in the fridge if you want it. An old Stumac listing from 1998. 1995 Guitar Player magazine with Hendrix on it. And a concert for Bangladesh. Well, needless to say, when he said he was sending me a small care package, I, I was not expecting half of this stuff. So thank you, Eric. I'm speechless, to, to be honest. This was way more than I was expecting and will look great in a museum display. So everyone can appreciate these. So now I just need to find out who bought that The Les Paul template, and then I'll have everything I want. <laughs> so again, Eric Ernest, Abalone Vintage, he didn't say, Film this and advertise me. He's just being a nice guy. Well, wasn't that a lot of fun? Now we need to help somebody get a guitar out of the country with my forwarding service. So if you're located outside of the United States, but you want to be able to shop for guitars within the US market and you need a trusted third party, that's what my forwarding service is for. You can find all the details on my website. International shipping is not cheap and import duties and taxes are even more, but if you really need something, I can help you. And I'll also make sure it's packed good like this box. <laughs> nope. Nope, not packed good at all. But this one's actually kind of a funny story. I featured it on the show and I told a little story about how my personal one, I sold it and then the buyer stole it with credit card fraud. So I'm not sure if this viewer saw that episode and that's why he reached out and said, hey, I want to get this guitar. Let's just hope it survived the trip from California. Inside here, we need to learn to speak some German. It's the Du Hast signature, Paul Landers Les Paul. 
So we've actually done a full review and documentation. You can check it out in this episode. But what makes it unique is the fact that you've got EMG pickups in it that are chrome topped so they look a little bit more normal. Now these are satin finished, so naturally when you play it, it gets buffed up in certain areas. But they also only have a single volume control on these things. They're just fire breathers. You don't need any tone. Other than that, it's a pretty basic satin finished Les Paul. Outside of having a silver binding, as far as I'm aware, it's one of the only Les Pauls to have just straight up silver binding like that. But it's a nice open pour finish. All things considered, this one's in pretty good shape. It just has some light wear. And then we've got the interesting medallion, Paul Landers number one. Although it does look like somebody has replaced our nut on this example. And you know what? The cool features just keep going on and on because you have a different fretboard material on here. This is a nice streaky example, but it's very evenly dark. That looks great. But let me tell you, this one is chunky. So I'll have to verify the condition with him and then I'll get it packed up and sent out. And everything's all good. Here it goes. And to round off tonight's episode, I've got a couple of other small packages here. Starting with our brown envelope that has another brown envelope inside. That usually means it's something that you do not want to bend. At least that's what I thought, but no, there's actually <laughs> another envelope on the back. We got some sort of a Russian doll situation here. And on the back side of this, oh. That was really, really complicated packaging for this. I had bought this a couple months back because I collect new old stock parts. So to have a list of everything that you could have, I thought was really cool, especially because we have the original retail prices for this particular year. But it also gives me a checklist of everything that I need to find. Because did you know they sold those mini crank tuner buttons separately? Now you do. But this is the 1983 price list. And now package number two. I believe this was actually a gift from a viewer of the show. He had told me he was just going to throw this away if I didn't want it, but it was some sort of a music tour CD from 2007 that was sponsored by Gibson Custom Shop. So it like has their branding on it and some sort of an interesting Les Paul. They could technically make that outside of a graphic. Just find a good piece of ash and then do the whole sandblasting grain fill technique and then give it the red inlays. Kind of reminds me of the China dog Les Paul. So perhaps something to display one day. Thank you. But I'm really excited to open up this piece. So typically I only collect 70s and 80s new old stock parts. I do collect 90s and early 2000s, but I'm not serious about those at all. Like I will pay a small premium for the 70s and 80s, but when it comes to the other stuff, no, I don't at this time. But a viewer of the show actually sent me a link to this listing and I kind of waited this seller out for a couple of months and I was just hoping and praying it wouldn't sell because it was asking just too much, but he finally buckled and I got the coolest new old stock parts collection. I never realized this was a thing. I knew that they sold the pickup ring separately, the switch tip separately, the standard truss rod cover separately, but this is a complete conversion kit to change your guitar over into cream plastics. So if you had like a Gibson Studio that you wanted to standardify, this is what you would buy. So I can't imagine many of these survived new old stock unopened. The other thing was, is he thought this was 80s. It's not. It's like late 90s, early 2000s. That's when they had this interesting packaging design. So I think that's why he was asking as much as he did, even though I, I did correct him <laughs> the first time, but... Whatever, it's here now, I've got it. It's a lot of fun. Stuff like this just makes me happy to see. And lastly for new stuff, let's see what we have in this box. Actually, you know what? I I'm gonna save that for a different episode because <laughs> that's a lot of talking. All right, troglodytes, I think that's enough fun for one episode. Let's save some for next time. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.